just before Jesus returned to heaven, he had told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them, and that they would be witnesses to him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So far in the book of Acts, we've seen the spreading of the gospel from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria and all along the Mediterranean coast on the eastern end of that Mediterranean Sea, having been established in Damascus and Antioch and Caesarea and in the bottom part of Turkey where Paul had spent a lot of time. These were areas which were dominated by Jewish people, although a large number of Gentiles had also been included in the church in Antioch. The Jerusalem church had sent Barnabas there. He had seen the need for someone who was very cross-cultural to help integrate Gentile background believers, Greek-speaking believers, with the Jewish believers, and so had brought Saul from Cilicia, and they had ministered a year. Saul is better known to us as Paul, which was his Greek name, but he's referred to as Saul in these early passages which were in the context of the Jewish church. The church there had sent a gift to Jerusalem and Saul and Barnabas had gone up to Jerusalem to deliver the gift and there had had an opportunity to meet with the apostles Peter, James and John to discuss the real issue. How was the gospel to be extended beyond the immediate area to the Gentile world. This is something that had been on Paul's mind since his conversion 14 years earlier. For the Lord had said to Ananias before sending him to Saul, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Now Saul laid out the plans that he had to the apostles and Peter, James and John commended Paul and Barnabas to this work. Saul and Barnabas returned to Antioch and we continue the story in Acts chapter 13. Now in the church that was at Antioch there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they had arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Alamus the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O full of deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. My name is Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share these verses together. Acts chapter 13 verses 1 to 12. The first step in a deliberate program to take the gospel to wider areas. We see that there was a plan. There was discussion of the plan. 
there was a presentation of the plan to the leaders of the church in Antioch after having been presented to the elders in Jerusalem in the context of praying and fasting and seeking God's will and that the Holy Spirit then directed the leaders in the church, the prophets and teachers, to send Barnabas and Saul for the work to which God had called them. In other words, the plan that they had was from God and the prophets and teachers recognised that. And so they fasted and they prayed and they laid hands on them and they sent them away. This was definitely a change of strategy from before. Before, the gospel had spread among the Jewish people just by natural conversation. As Jews had been persecuted one place, they'd moved somewhere else and they talked to their fellow Jews. It was within the Jewish culture. But now the gospel was to be extended beyond the Jewish culture to the whole Gentile world. And a deliberate strategy was in place to do that. Now at this time we see that Barnabas is mentioned first, Saul is second. Uh, Barnabas is seen as the senior person. He was a believer before Saul was. But they had worked very closely together and teamed up in this ministry. So while they were sent out by the church in Antioch, Luke also reports being sent out by the Holy Spirit for they had been called by God to do this work. And so they set off to Cyprus. Why Cyprus? Cyprus was Barnabas' home territory. Barnabas had come from Cyprus. And so his first responsibility is to take the message home to the Jews of Cyprus. And that's what they do. They begin always teaching the word of God, of Jesus, in the synagogues not disrupting the society, not confronting the Gentiles, but knowing that many Gentiles were conscious of the Jews and were meeting with the Jews, seeking to know the ways of God. And we're also told that John, we also know John as Mark, was their assistant. He was a young man at the time when Jesus was crucified. The Last Supper was conducted in his home and he had followed the apostles out into the Garden of Gethsemane and witnessed Jesus' arrest and nearly got caught himself, fleeing, leaving his garment behind. And so he had been in close contact. The early Christians had regularly met in the house of Mary, his mother, a sister to Barnabas. And so John, from a very early age, had been a young person growing up with the apostles, and he comes to help Paul and Barnabas in their ministry. As they move through the island from north to south, they find some opposition in the form of a Jewish false prophet, a man who is a Jew, who claims to have special knowledge, but in fact he does not have true knowledge of God. And this man resists the teaching that Barnabas and Saul are bringing, particularly when Barnabas and Saul are talking to the proconsul, the man in charge of the whole island. But Saul confronts him saying, O you full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And so he pronounces a judgment on him that he should be blind for a while, just to demonstrate that this man, by opposing the gospel, was indeed blind. So he became blind for a while. The proconsul was amazed at what he had witnessed. He was a leading man of the city. He had seen many great things. But here were two Jewish preachers declaring the power of the Lord Jesus, who they declared to be the Christ. That is, a man born to be king of the Jews, who'd been crucified by the Romans, and risen again, and ascended to heaven one day to return and take up his throne. And in this man's name, a false prophet was revealed. So the proconsul believed in Jesus, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. 